So one of the topics that I get asked about all the time is how a Thomist would respond to um, atheistic objections to the Thomistic proofs for God's existence uh, from existential inertia. Now, for uh, some of you who may not know, the doctrine of existential inertia is basically the idea that um, God's existence as sustaining cause of the world is unnecessary because at least some things might have the capacity to exist on their own unless brought out of existence by some other thing. Um, this is sort of the metaphysical variation of the law of inertia in physical science, but applied to the relationship between existence and things. Um, now, I don't necessarily intend to give a full and complete refutation of existential inertia here, but I do want to give at least some cursory uh, reflections that I've been um, having on this issue uh, lately. It seems to me that those who raise this objection uh, either don't fully comprehend the ramifications of uh, the existential metaphysics of St. Thomas, or they think that uh, the nuts and bolts of Thomistic metaphysics just amount to sort of metaphysical baggage that you can sort of take or leave when engaging with the Thomistic proofs for God's existence. But this really couldn't be further from the truth. I don't think it's possible to successfully put forth uh, the Thomistic proofs for God's existence, specifically the cosmological arguments, without fleshing out the underlying metaphysical principles that give these arguments their unique flavor of uh, philosophical depth. Now, this can, of course, serve as a double-edged sword in as much as it becomes somewhat challenging to simplify these arguments for a popular audience. It's kind of a struggle that I've had on this channel for a long time, but sometimes I think oversimplification can open up an argument to objections that would be completely unintelligible if those subtle principles and distinctions that were deemed unessential, if they would have been retained. And I think that's precisely what goes on in many discussions concerning existential inertia. For many proponents of existential inertia, the very concept of existence starts off as disconnected, uh, in my view, from the underlying metaphysical framework out of which the Thomistic proofs are developed. Now, of course, uh, don't misunderstand me, I'm not saying that because they are not presuming the veracity of Thomistic metaphysics of existence that therefore their counter arguments are faulty. I'm saying that any argument against the Thomistic proofs that does not also address the underlying metaphysical framework of St. Thomas's doctrine of existence, essence, form, matter, and so on, will at the end of the day not truly have the right to be considered a true and legitimate counter argument to those Thomistic proofs in the proper sense. Nor do I think it makes sense to say that all this really demonstrates is that the Thomistic proofs are insufficient on their own if they require underlying metaphysical baggage to really get off the ground, because I don't think it's possible to create a sound argument for any important issue without uh, underlying metaphysical assumptions that could further be held up you know, to ind independent scrutiny. Now, just to illustrate this a bit more concretely as it relates to existential inertia specifically, um, for the Thomist, essence and existence are related to each other as potency is to act. This is very important. What this means is that the act of existence is the actuating principle whereby essence can be said to have any being at all. And this falls naturally from the Aristotelian distinction between act and potency as such. On the Aristotelian view, if a potency is not grounded in a thing's principle of actuality, then it is simply reduced to non-being because that which is absolutely speaking outside of actual being has no being at all. Potency, by definition, cannot raise itself to act, because considered of and by itself, it has no principle whereby a thing is said to be a real being, because real being uh, can only be rooted in actuality. That's just the classic distinction between act and potency. Act is being considered as real and complete, and stands as the source of a thing's reception of real being, potency is that which receives this actualizing principle, or has the capacity to receive this actualizing principle. Therefore, if essence and existence are related to each other as potency is to act, then the idea that an essence could exist even for a moment without the sustaining presence of the act of existence is simply incoherent, and that's because, just like potency cannot raise itself to act, essence cannot raise itself to existence, because the act of existence is, as per the metaphysical structure of reality according to the universe of St. Thomas, it's the existential principle of actuality, whereby any essence can truly be considered 
real at all. That is the act of existence for St. Thomas. It would be like asking if uh, the atmosphere could be illuminated even for a moment without the actively sustaining presence of light. It is of the very nature of illumination that light serve as its principle of actuality, so to speak, without which nothing could in principle be illuminated at all. Now, from this, it shouldn't be too difficult to conclude that existential inertia would have to be ruled out. And that's because if essences can only exist in as much as they receive their principle of actuality, that is to say the act of existence from without, then if reality was merely reducible to such essences that must receive existence derivatively, then no essence could even in principle exist at all. In other words, if derivative existence is all there is, then there can be no existence at all, given the nature of what it is to be derivative. To be derivative is to receive from another. And so if there exists no reality that need not receive existence from another, namely the pure act of existence itself, or what we call God, then existence can never be received in any essence, full stop. And really, I don't even think this is the most controversial part of the argument. Most of the controversy, it seems to me, is rooted in establishing precisely that underlying metaphysical framework of essence and existence that I set out to articulate uh, throughout this video. Uh, and if that metaphysical framework holds, existential inertia, it seems to me, would lack the conceptual tools necessary to even be intelligible, let alone rationally defensible as a counter-argument to, to mystic proofs for God's existence. If we can at least have this debate where it belongs, then it might well be productive, but at least in the popular you know, form of these disputes, I don't really see it. Um, so I hope you found this video a bit helpful. Um, if you did, you know, leave it a like, subscribe. As I said, I'm going to keep trying to make regular uh, uploads on you know, various topics like this and other things. So my last video, I kind of gave a sort of preview on what to expect. So yeah, that should do for this one. God bless.